Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoy this evening's Hellraiser blog, please hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can see future blogs. I'm going to talk about the Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk fight that we've just watched. Um, very disappointing night for Anthony Joshua. Um, there's something in that tonight that I think is a, a major problem in boxing and something that um, gets swept under the carpet for convenience reasons. Now, this is what I'm going to say. I have been really disappointed in Anthony Joshua for both his fights with Andy Ruiz um, and his fight against Kubrat Pulev. In, in all of those fights, I was quite critical of him. And in all of those fights, if you go through my blogs on my YouTube page, you will see people commenting, saying it was a boxing masterclass. He did. Right. Um, obviously, after he got stopped the first time against Andy Ruiz, and he was doing something right against Andy Ruiz, but I don't know. His concentration just seemed to fizzle out very early on in the fight, which caused him to get stopped. Um, his confidence was completely shot. And I understand at this level where he is and the, the, the wages he's now earning and the big shows, etc., people don't want to see him just going through the motions and getting confidence fights. But surely there are some people out there that he could have had who've got the record and the ranking, but he would have just sort of gone through so he could have spent time in the gym building his confidence. Confidence... I always look at it, it's like it's so difficult to build confidence in a fight. It's like onion skin layers, you know, wafer thin layers. And you put layer on layer on layer. And that's how you build confidence in a fight. It takes a long time. There are no shortcuts. It takes time and it takes um, a lot of careful planning. Um, and when, it, when things go wrong and the fighter gets knocked out, it doesn't matter how long you spend <laughs> putting these layers on, that's it. It fizzles out very quickly. And... Joshua obviously got stopped by Andy Ruiz. Um, the rematch, I, I wasn't impressed with that, the way he boxed. I thought Andy Ruiz came in an absolutely shocking shape against Joshua, and Joshua really had the opportunity to make a statement against him. You know, like a Lennox Lewis versus Hassan Rackman 2 type statement. And Ru Ruiz was there for the taking that night. And Joshua chose... To, to pick and poke and um, to stick to, to, to outboxing him, which he did, but it didn't really set a statement. And also, to me, it, it created more doubts than I had even before that, because he looked very gun-shy, and his confidence was completely wrecked by that point. Um, he then goes and fights Kubrat Pulev, who, again, you know, I don't think that the people that were lauding and sort of... Uh, pandering to, to Joshua saying what a wonderful performance I don't think they helped him at all because it wasn't a great performance again, Pulev, for me, he's right at the end of his career he's there for the taking, he's there to make you look fantastic like a 10 out of 10 fighter and Joshua looked far from that against them and um, in against Usyk tonight I felt strongly, if he does not take control of this early, this fight is going to quickly turn into a nightmare for him. Because once Usyk gets his range and gets his movement going, and he's got very sharp, fast hands, he's a major problem. I think the plan B, which we didn't see from Joshua, but the plan B had to be, if you can't outbox him, which I didn't think he could, I mean, if you watch the blog that I did, I, I said strongly, if he tries to outbox him, this is a fight that goes wrong for him. But as soon as he realised that he, he couldn't land that jab, he, he missed so many times with the jab. He, he caught him a few times as well, but he missed so often with the jab. And Usyk was slipping and slipping. And Usyk's head movement, let's you know, tell you how it is, is absolutely world-class, genuine, proper world-class, brilliant, brilliant uh, defensive fighter, Alexander Usyk. But Joshua clearly couldn't land on him. So at that point, I think very early in the fight, I'm talking like round two, he has to change tactics and he has to start hitting the targets that he can hit, the chest, the body, uh, holding him with one hand, which you're not allowed to do, but when things get, the stakes are very high and it's, you know, drastic 
measures are required, hold him, look like Lennox Lewis, used to walk people down, hold them with one hand and hit them with the other, then hold them again and come. And that's what Joshua needed to do tonight. He was missing with punches by, you know, margins repetitively and not changing anything really. Um, very experienced coach in his corner, Robert McCracken. Um, I mean, look, they'll all be disappointed. I'm not. I'm certainly not trying to put the boot into them because I actually like all of them. But um, I, I just thought this this was a product tonight of the garbage that's been fed to, to, to Joshua. Look, after the, the 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 knockout defeat to Andy Ruiz, which I think smashed his confidence, and I think the financial aspect of it possibly dictated rather than rebuild this guy and be patient and take a measured approach with how to bring him back to where we need him to be so he can perform in the big fight. He's been, I mean, I mean, the best you could say against, for me, that you would say the, the rematch with Andy Ruiz, which he won clearly, which is what he had to do, but the thing is Andy Ruiz was in such bad shape that Joshua should have been smashing that guy. And that would have put his, his confidence back where... So it would be at least on the road back to where it needs to be. Um, Kubrat Pulev, an old man, a guy that is, you know, uh, far from like a, a, a top, top sort of pound for pound or even a top heavyweight. Um, Joshua looked like he was like very, very cautious and, and worried about coming forwards against him. Um, and then tonight against Usyk, it was always going to be a hard fight. Joshua needed to be absolutely at the peak of his game. It needed to be um, a 10 out of 10 performance from Joshua. And he needed to use, he, he's got advantages, he's got reach, he's got size, he's got power really. He, he, I mean really you'd say Joshua is the puncher of the two. But if you're not punching the guy, not hitting the target or hitting anywhere, it doesn't matter how hard you punch, it does no damage, it, it doesn't do anything. Um, and jo Joshua just missed with the jab, you know, so, so many times. He looked like he was listless. He, he, he seemed like um, he ran out of ideas very early. And, um, you know, he needed to use that reach advantage. He needed to use the height. He needed to use his, his bulk, his weight. Um, but he didn't. He got bullied. He got outboxed and bullied. That's the truth of it. Um, and it, it, it was clear from early on he couldn't find Usyk with the jab. So how frustrating was that? Um, I'm not saying it's easy. Listen, Usyk for me, he went up even more. He was already extremely high in my estimation, gone up even more now. It's not an easy fight. It's very easy for me to sit here saying, oh, we should have done this, should have done that. But um, he should have. And Look, Usyk is a brilliant, brilliant fight. He is a pound for pound. Doesn't matter what weight he's at. He, I mean, he he has a perfect, perfect southpaw uh, tactical approach. He's a brilliant stylist, technical fighter, um, and he just made it look so easy against a guy that's actually very decent. You know, in Joshua, Olympic Games, super heavyweight, gold medalist. Um, but look, I was so disappointed in Joshua. He almost ignored the body completely. So you're fighting a guy whose head moves like this permanently. Please, don't hit him here. Hit him here. Hit him in the body. Hold him with one hand and smash him to the body. And then hold him again and walk him to the ropes. And then it makes it easier to hit. They were fighting at Usyk's range for the whole fight. Not once, well, I think once in the whole fight, I saw Joshua really target the body with, a, with heavy shot. I was so disappointed, and I um, I don't know where Joshua goes from there. I and mean, obviously, Tyson Fury fight now is on the rise and moving further away by the second. Um, Joshua couldn't find the chin, he couldn't find the body either. We didn't throw to the body, so no <laughs> no chance of him finding that. Um, guys, I'm gonna, I'm probably going to keep this quite short and not sweet. Um, very disappointed. Um, I don't know where Joshua goes from here. He's going to have to restructure. I hope they, they will... Look, there's clearly better to come from Joshua than what we've seen.
Guys, if you enjoyed the blog, please hit the scrap, the, the hit the subscribe button, and uh, getting a little bit emotional. I think it's um, awful tonight from from Joshua. That's the, and that's the truth. Listen, I don't like saying bad stuff about performances when it's it's not right to do so, but. Um, terrible, terrible, terrible. They, 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 you, you can't, and, and I know what boxing is like. It's a big problem. When he's probably been surrounded by people telling him, "Oh, that was good. What you did against Ruiz the second fight was brilliant. What you done against Cobra Pulev, yeah, that's acceptable too. It's not. It's rubbish. And someone somewhere has to stand up and say, "Listen, that's garbage. That's rubbish." Um. He's capable of so much better than that, Anthony Joshua, for sure, a hundred percent. And you know, something in his setup needs to shift, needs to be turned around. Um, doesn't necessarily mean get rid of the trainer, but it it, do, it does mean a major change. It means something in the, the 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 way he's preparing is not working because we've seen a guy really his form has plummeted over the last sort of 18 months it, it, it's really taken a shocking turn for the worst and a guy who you know looked like he was going to be um, a long-standing champion who really would be very very difficult to beat um, Usyk really made it look easy tonight he played with Joshua um, I saw a comment on Twitter I haven't had a chance to measure it yet but I saw a comment on Twitter which was saying that the round ended eight seconds short. Joshua was in massive trouble at the end of the fight. He was rocking on the ropes, being picked off and thumped all around the, 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 the ring. If the fight... The, I, I had this terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach that we're going to get an awful, awful, awful bad decision. And they're gonna, well, I'm glad they didn't do that. But apparently the, the last round ended eight seconds short. This is a comment I saw repeatedly on Twitter on my time. I, I, I want to see that now. And if it did end eight seconds short, the timekeeper must never work in boxing again. That would be absolute appalling incompetence if that happened there. I hope it's not a friend of mine. I didn't even look who the timekeeper was. But if the fight did end eight seconds short when AJ was in such big trouble, it's completely dishonest. And we can't promote the sport. We can't hope to sell it to corporates, to the, the, the general public, if that's the level of incompetence that's involved with, with the administration of the sport. Um, I mean, I'm going to check it before I go on too much about it, but these sort of things, look, it's not that difficult. I mean, I've never been a timekeeper, but you've got a clock and you have to follow it round and it's three minutes and that's when the round ends. And to do it when the home fight is in big trouble, eight, was it, if it was eight seconds early, then that's appalling. That's terrible, and that shouldn't happen, because, um, I mean, these are the things that grind our sport down, that, that stop us from progressing and flourishing as an industry. Boxing needs to be seen as a sport that is honest, that is clean, that is um, worthy of the support that it gets. And if it did end eight seconds early, um, and I didn't want to see Joshua getting knocked out, he was getting bludgeoned along the ropes. I, I don't want to see that, but I want him to come through the fight um, in a fair way. And listen, Joshua's absolutely not to blame for that, but someone clearly, is, if, if that's happened, has made a mistake, that needs to be wiped out. And I hope that measures are taken to make sure that you know that, that can't happen because um, that's appalling. Anyway, enough of me ranting and raving for one night. Ladies and gentlemen, from my kitchen, if you enjoyed the blog, even if you didn't, you're just interested to watch another one, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you on board for future blogs, and uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.